Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Blessings, everybody. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me today on the Word Podcast. We're continuing our examination through the book of Hebrews, a really, really interesting segment right here in the fourth chapter. We looked at the first two verses uh, in the previous episode, as a matter of fact. And it's it's sort of an, uh, an elongated, extended unfolding of a truth right here. And I sort of planned on going through verse by verse by verse, which we're going to do. But it's probably going to take another two or three episodes. I'm not sure. It depends on how much I talk, right, <laughs> to do this. And it just hit me a while ago. I thought, you know, let me read the whole thing because the, the first 10 verses are all like one extended thought. And if you just do a couple of verses at a time, yeah, you, you can unfold it. You can peel it back. You can see what's going on. But you don't see what the big picture is. So let me give you the big picture. And then as time allows, we'll back up and go look at everything, okay, in detail. Some really interesting things here. So Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, let us fear if, while a promise remains of entering his rest, any one of you may seem to have come short of it. For indeed, we have had good news preached to us, just as also they had. But the word they heard did not profit them, because it was not united by faith in those who heard. So remember the context. Uh, the author is talking to them about their forefathers, how the children of Israel had been uh, delivered from slavery, delivered from 400 years of oppression in Egypt. And they came out, and the Lord wanted to lead them in the promised land. But in the previous chapter, he explained to us that they did not go in because of unbelief, their disbelief. They were disobedient. And he's saying, don't let that happen. But remember that there is a promise of entering into rest. And so we see this picture of uh, the promised land for them being that arena of rest. When we use that phraseology in the contemporary church, particularly in the deep south where I am, uh, uh, entering into the rest in the promised land, people are thinking of crossing over to Jordan when we die and we go into glory uh, forever and ever. Well, there is that element of it, okay? But primarily what he's speaking of is the rest that we have in the Lord now. That the promised land isn't just in the future. The promised land is now, okay? And this is really important to understand that. So that's the whole point. Let me uh, pick up verse 3 right here. We'll see. For we who have believed enter that rest. So see, he's saying right there, those of us who have believed, we enter that rest. Just as he said, and this is the Lord speaking. It's a quote from the Old Testament. As I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although his works were finished from the foundation of the world. Man, that, that right there is so profound. So he's saying this, that if you're a true believer, you've entered that rest. And he says, you remember how the Lord had sworn his wrath that they weren't going to enter in the rest because they did not believe? Well, you have believed and the idea is that you have entered in that rest. But then he says this, although his works were finished from the foundation of the world or accomplished from the foundation of the world, uh, what, what although yet his works, in other words, these works were finished before the Lord spoke anything into existence. And yet Israel did not believe and did not enter into the rest. Uh, you know, we're going to go at some point in time, it'll probably be after we get done with Hebrews, because uh, I was just looking at it a while ago. I was going to chase it right here, and I changed my mind. <laughs> we're going to look at this foundations of the world. There's about a dozen passages that have that exact phrase and what that means. Here it just says that his works were finished from the foundation of the world. Let me see if I can take this over to him. Listen to what it says in Ephesians 1. Just as he, that's the Father, chose us in him, that's Jesus the Son, before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him. The Lord did all this before the foundation of the world, before he spoke anything into existence. Isn't that crazy? We'll look at that more as we go along. Now verse 4, and just trying to get the big picture, because there's a point I want to get to in verse 10. For he has said somewhere concerning the seventh day, in a quote from the Old Testament, 
and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again, in another passage, they shall not enter my rest. Remember, he reiterates this over and over and over, that they're not going to enter my rest because of their disobedience, because of their unbelief. Verse 6, therefore, since it remains for some to enter it, and that is the rest of the Lord, and those who formerly had good news preached to them failed to enter because of disobedience. Remember, he said at the end of the third chapter, he's reminding us again. Verse 7, he again fixes a certain day. Today, saying through David after so long a time, just as has been said before, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. So the Lord quotes that passage, that idea, do not harden your heart <coughs> two or three times. He's mentioned in Hebrews, uh, sometimes from the uh, prophet, sometimes from David right here. He said that David said this. Then verse 8, for if Joshua had given them rest, he would not have spoken of another day after that. So what's he saying? He's saying, if Joshua had given them the rest that he's speaking of, Joshua is the one that led them into the promised land. Joshua was the one that led them into the land of rest. But that's just a foreshadowing and a type of, in a, in a, in a prophetic sense, of that which is yet to come. That which is yet to come. Verse 9. So, there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. So the author is saying this to these Jewish believers. They're true believers. They believe that Jesus is Messiah, but they're Jewish in background. And he's saying there remains a Sabbath rest, but it's not the Sabbath rest that you think it is. Here's verse 10. For the one who has entered his, Jesus' father's rest, has himself also rested from his works as God did from his. So this starts to bring together several things. Uh, I mentioned at the beginning of this discussion several episodes ago that you can see uh, all the Ten Commandments, you find it in Exodus 20, you see them in the New Testament, in the New Covenant in various ways. Uh, for instance, we're not supposed to murder, okay? Not supposed to do this, not supposed to do that. That's fine. But you don't see the, the commandment to keep the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. As a matter of fact, that was a big division within the body of Christ at the beginning. Paul actually writes about that. I think it was the church of Corinth. It says, uh, well, maybe Romans. Romans, And it says, you know, some people think that uh, some days are more important than others. Some people think that all days are the same. Okay? And so you don't see a commandment to keep the Sabbath. You don't see that anywhere. But you see right here, it says there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of the Lord. And then in other passages, which we will encounter, you see that the bottom line is this, folks, that Jesus is our Sabbath rest. So I don't keep the Sabbath in the traditional sense of someone that's under the law in the Old Covenant and setting aside a particular day. I'm one of those that believes all days are the same, and they are, okay? But we have a Sabbath rest. Our Sabbath rest is in the Lord Jesus Christ. So what he's encouraging them to do and what he's saying, again, we'll go back and look at these things in a little more detail, is that if you believe we have entered into that rest and the rest is in the Lord Jesus Christ, he is our Sabbath rest. That is the Sabbath rest of the people of the Lord. And verse 10, for the one who has entered his rest has himself also rested from his works as God did from his. In the same way that when God created in six days, and he rested from his works. When we enter into the Lord Jesus Christ, we rest from our works. Speaking this to a group of people who are believers that came out of Judaism with all the sacrificial works that were involved in this, and that, that was transformative. That was rattling their cage. I tell you what, we have the same type of religious works that the Lord wants to set us free from. We need to rest in him, not in our ability to do things for him. Well, my time is up again. I'm Dale. I'll see you in the next episode.